Welcome to the Copper Spice YouTube channel, and thanks for joining us. In this video, we are going to define programming paradigms and talk about how they relate to C++. Paradigms, polymorphism, and generic programming. We have always believed the word paradigm was somewhat cryptic, ambiguous, and possibly even a bit overrated. The truth is, the word has multiple meanings, and the definition depends on the field of study. We recently discovered that a programming paradigm turns out to be very useful. It provides a structured way to think about how to write software. There are countless paradigms. Some make guarantees, while others are very restrictive. Knowing which paradigm you are using will control and influence your designs. One of the most common paradigms current day programmers consider is the object-oriented programming paradigm. C++ can be used to write object-oriented code, but it does not claim to be an object-oriented language. In fact, the language does not limit your code to using a single paradigm. We decided to look up the definition of the word paradigm in the dictionary and discovered several different meanings. The oldest says it describes an outstandingly clear or widely accepted example or belief. An example of a widely accepted belief is the way people describe the shape of the earth. For centuries, people believed the earth was flat. When ancient Greek scholars proposed the earth was round, this became accepted as the dominant paradigm in science for many centuries. It is still the most common belief in the general public, and is very close to the truth. When Isaac Newton came along, he suggested the earth was not perfectly round, but instead an oblate spheroid which bulges outwards at the equator. In the 1980s, new technology gave rise to even better ways of measuring the shape. Having a clear and correct paradigm for the shape of the Earth is necessary for satellite navigation systems. A paradigm can also be used to describe a particular way of thinking. In the social sciences, judgments about other people based on their physical characteristics is a type of paradigm. The best definition for software design is the concept of a theoretical framework. This is about how someone might view a particular problem and what approach can be taken to solve it. The usage of the word paradigm in the sciences became more popular in 1970 when Thomas S. Kuhn published the second edition of The Structure of Scientific Revolutions. In this book, he used the word paradigm to represent over 20 different concepts. This both popularized the word and also made it harder to define accurately. What is clear is that his primary idea was science does not evolve incrementally, but rather in a sequence of paradigm shifts. This shift is where the accepted scientific truth will change significantly in a very short period of time. As we looked for a precise definition for the term software paradigm, several very similar but slightly different interpretations appeared. It was interesting to observe they fit into two general categories. Some software paradigms refer to designs which are bound or restricted by a set of constraints. The other group of software paradigms involve the way in which code is organized within a program. Paradigms give us a way to classify programming languages based on the features provided by the language. Computer languages which are intentionally designed around a single paradigm constrain the structure of a program. It is more common for a computer language to support multiple paradigms, like C++. Typically, languages with more features are able to support a larger number of software paradigms. Choosing a paradigm which represents the problem you're trying to solve affects the code base and will ultimately make the software implementation 
more readable and maintainable. This is the theory and what we should strive for. However, it may not always be easy to do in practice. Thinking in terms of a paradigm will guide your design and your implementations. As an example, the SQL language uses the declarative programming paradigm, where your code will express the logic without describing how the result is produced. When writing a sequence of SQL statements, you do not specify how the database should retrieve the data. You simply declare a set of constraints, such as, give me a list of every person over the age of 30. Here is something else to consider. There are two distinct ways to execute a computer program. One is interpreted, which means your code is read and then executed by another program, called an interpreter. It is called an interpreter because this program interprets your source code and immediately does the operations your program specifies. Perl is an example of an interpreted language. If you install Perl on a Linux computer versus installing it on a Windows computer, you will be installing a completely different program. The different versions of Perl will interpret your source code as needed for the given platform. The other way to execute code is by compiling the source code as we do in C++. A compiler is also a program, but instead of immediately executing the instructions in your source code, the compiler generates machine code for your target platform, which is executed later. The source code may be platform independent. However, the compiled machine code will be generated for the target operating system and hardware. There is a gray area between these two, which is called just-in-time compilation. And many languages, which were only interpreted, are now using this approach. The idea of JIT is an attempt to combine the best characteristics of the other two execution models. We are mentioning these terms since neither interpreted nor compiled are considered a true software paradigm. There is nothing about these which affect the philosophy of the code or influences the structure of your design. There is no dominant software programming paradigm, although some may say the one I use is the right one. The three we have listed are the most commonly used in modern programming. The procedural programming paradigm states that a program must be composed of functions, which are sometimes called procedures or subroutines. By definition, each function should be responsible for performing a single task. The C programming language is a good example of a language where the majority of any given program will use the procedural paradigm. The functional programming paradigm is organized around the mathematical definition of a function. In this paradigm, each function should produce a single result, which must be based on just the received parameters. Functions cannot have side effects or change the state of an existing object. There is no data shared between functions. Haskell is a language designed specifically to encourage this style of programming, and it discourages the use of other software paradigms. The object-oriented paradigm defines a style which consists of classes, which are composed of methods and data. It also includes inheritance, which is defined as a relationship between classes. A restriction of this paradigm is that the data must only be accessed by methods of the corresponding class. Based on the definition, there are no free functions and no public data members. One of the most influential object-oriented languages is Smalltalk, which was released in the early 1970s. 
what we have learned so far is that a software paradigm does not refer to a specific programming language. The question to consider is if these paradigms are compatible with one another. For example, is it possible to write a program which is object-oriented and also a bit functional? Most applications written in C++ use a combination of paradigms, and we believe the language has evolved in this direction intentionally. An experienced C++ programmer should be able to examine a section of their code to determine which paradigm is being used. If the code uses free functions to modify global data, then the code was written in a procedural manner. If the data is passed to a comparator free function, this would likely be considered functional programming. If all data is stored in members of a class and methods are provided to access this data without exposing it to free functions, then the code is structured using the principles of object-oriented programming. This is why C++ is a multi-paradigm language, and you are free to mix and match within one application, depending on the constraints of the project. We mentioned inheritance is part of the object-oriented programming paradigm. In fact, it is a defining characteristic. Inheritance is where a given child or subclass receive certain qualities such as data or methods from another class, called the parent or base class. Inheritance is more than simply a way to reuse code. It expresses some connection between the parent class and the child class. By design, in C++, other than private data, most of the methods in the parent will be available in the child class. So as the word implies, children inherit functionality from their parent. When using inheritance, you have increased the coupling between classes. What happens if someone adds functionality to the base class? What will happen if someone changes the base class to inherit from another class? Your child class may now have acquired attributes and methods which you did not anticipate. It is worth mentioning that composition can often be a better approach than inheritance. This is where the parent class is used as the type for a data member in the child class. This still couples the classes together, but not as tightly. Composition is considered another part of the object-oriented programming paradigm. As part of this conversation, we should talk about the difference between inheritance and polymorphism. These are both components of the object-oriented paradigm, but they are not paradigms on their own. The term polymorphism comes from the ancient Greeks and literally means many forms. In computer science, polymorphism refers to when a function is called and there are multiple possibilities. The choice of which one to invoke will either be resolved at compile time or at runtime. In many languages, inheritance is the only way to accomplish polymorphism. In C++, compile time polymorphism happens when you have a function or a method which is overloaded. The process of overload resolution is used to decipher which function to call. Runtime polymorphism in C++ uses inheritance and involves overriding methods. The implementation located in the child class will provide some unique feature which could not be part of the parent class. Selecting the parent class or child class method will depend on the data type of the object, which is only known at runtime. Templates were added to C++ to provide a new paradigm, which is called generic programming. 
Designing code which uses templates involves writing a function or method which will do the same operation regardless of the data type. As an example, the process of appending to an STD vector is the same no matter what data type is being stored in the container. The main purpose of generic programming is to increase code reusability. What is sometimes missed is that templates are actually another mechanism for implementing compile time polymorphism. As a review, function or method overloading is where functions with the same name are resolved at compile time. Overriding methods requires inheritance and happens at runtime. All three of these are different kinds of polymorphism supported by the C++ standard. Hopefully, we have encouraged a paradigm shift in your thinking. So instead of just saying polymorphism, you use the complete term and say compile time polymorphism or runtime polymorphism. For more information about the Copper Spice project, please visit our website at www.copperspice.com. Thanks for watching. We hope you found the content of value. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave a comment on this video or send us email. Please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and come back for our next video.